haven't um, spoke from from uh, this campus in a while, and so it's good to be here with you guys today. I'm super excited. This sermon series that we've been on um, basically throughout the summer is called um, Victory, and God wants you to have victory. He wants you to live in victory. Jesus did not come to die on the cross and to redeem us from the enemy so that we can have a miserable life. Amen. <laughs> he wants you to have victory. That does not mean that you're not going to have troubles in this world. Right, because he Jesus himself said, You will have troubles, you will have many troubles in this world, but to take heart because he has overcome the world. And so, I want to encourage you that because of Jesus, we can live victoriously, we can live that abundant life that God has spoken about. And today, I specifically want to talk about having victory in the way that we serve others. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to read this scripture to you right here in Matthew 20, 25 to 26. It says, Jesus called them together and said, you know that rulers and Gentile, Gen, excuse me, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Can you say that with me? Say not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Friends, being a servant is key to victory. A lot of times we want to be successful. We want to be great. We want to be awesome. But Jesus said the way I do things and the way I'm calling you to do things is going to be different than the way the world does things. He is calling us to serve. Now, in 20 years of ministry, and I'm not the most, uh, I, there's many ministers I know have way more than 20 years of ministry, but just in 20 years of ministry, I have noticed a pattern. Oftentimes, people start off victoriously, and then we see life and troubles and things just happen, and we see people slowly burn out. A lot of times when the new believer gets saved, they're the number one person. Let me volunteer. I want to open the doors. Let me help in kids ministry. Let me go tell all my family and friends about Jesus. And then slowly but surely we see that burnout happen. And, and friends, I believe that through Christ we can avoid that burnout and we can truly be victorious for the long haul, because I don't know about you, but the Bible says that he who endures to the end will be saved. It's not how fast you start the race, friends. It's the endurance to, to keep on going and to not give up. And I want to see our church equipped by the Holy Spirit to do every good work that God has called us to do. Amen. So today, I'm going to bust out an old school joy way of teaching because I know y'all have missed me. So we are going to do an acrostic. I know you're happy, girl. We got an acrostic for you today. We are going to learn how to serve. Guess what's going to be the acrostic? Serve victoriously. So we're going to break down that word serve, and you're going to have a point with each letter and how to serve victoriously. You're about to get served. Oh, yes, you're about to get served. Okay, number one, and honestly, this is like, they're all important, but this, this is foundational right here. Number one, if you want to serve victoriously and not burn out, you, you must um, support your doing for God by being with God. Okay, I know that's really wordy, but it just is what it is. <laughs> What I mean by that is if you're out doing, 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 doing for God, like you are just so on fire, you're like, let me volunteer for the block party. Let me volunteer for kids camp. Let me volunteer for Vision Kitchen. Let me volunteer to help in the nursery. Lord, bless them, please. We need you, okay? Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do this. And you're doing, 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 but you're not taking the time to be in his presence. You're going to find yourself tired, irritated, and just done. 
It happens. It doesn't matter how good-hearted you are. It doesn't matter how excited you are about serving people if you are not allowing yourself to be your your doing, being supported by your being with God, you're going to find yourself burnt out. God calls us human what? Beings, not human doings. But, boy, (laughs) we love to do. So And we don't necessarily take time to be in his presence. Now, the um, example I'm going to give you from the Bible and and the New Testament here is probably the one that you might be thinking of because it's the most common. And it's about Martha and Mary, okay? I know this is a very common uh, story and example, but I want to bring this back because it's so, so important. And it's found in Luke 10, 38 and 42. And it says, as Jesus... And his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha. But anytime you see Jesus repeat himself, that is the Greek way of just really saying Martha. <laughs> Not Martha, Martha, or Lord, Lord. They, they didn't have stuttering problems in the New Testament. That was, that's for emphasis, okay? So it's Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Whoo, Martha was doing some pretty important things, friends. I hate it when people read this and they blast Martha. We need Marthas in the world. But we need Marthas to learn from their sister Mary and learn that before we serve, we need to sit. (laughs) Before we're out doing everything that needs to be done, we need to make sure that we're sitting in the presence of God. Us being in the presence of God will fuel us to do the serving. She was doing all the things that needed to be done. She wanted to bless Jesus. Her intentions was to to serve and to do right. But, But, friends, she found herself frustrated. How many of us have been there before? Like, I want to get to church on time, Lord, and find yourself frustrated at your kids for not waking up on time. Come on. Right? I, I want, I want to help, but man, I'm just so tired from my full week of work. I want to be there. I want to support. I want to give, but I just find myself at my, my, the end of the rope. I find myself at my wits end. I just, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Man, there's so many exhausted Christians. Let me tell you, friends, the answer to your exhaustion is not to quit. That's what people do. They quit. It's to be more in the presence of God. There's nothing else that can fill you. There's nothing else that can make you feel better. Not even sitting in the most anointed church service with the most anointed preaching and worship and all the lights and the smoke. That's not even going to do it for you. What's going to do it for you is when you get alone with Jesus. When you prioritize your time with him. When I find myself frustrated and just, full of anxiety because I got too much on my to-do list, that's when I know I need to step away. I need to spend time with Jesus. Me venting to my husband isn't going to help. Me calling my bestie is not going to make it better. Me spending time with Jesus, that's what does it. We need to be in our word. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in worship and in the presence with God, being alone with God. That's what does it. That's what fuels us to serve. Sometimes we can be like Martha and we can get mad and think that we're doing all the work by ourselves while everybody else is just sitting around doing nothing. Come on. You, you've never done that before? You're like, seriously, if I had to pick up one more dish, there was five other people in this house. Hello, come on. You've never thought that before, right? You've never been so frustrated. Like why, why am I carrying my load at work and my coworkers and my bosses and the person under, why am I doing it all? You've never felt like that? Come on, somebody. Oh, 
This is the thing, though. When we feel like that, we fall into the same temptation that Martha did, and we find ourselves complaining about other people instead of praying to God to change their hearts. See, Jesus told us in Luke 10, too, he, he, he said the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And then he says, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. I just found myself in this place where I was praying and I was just asking the Lord, God, you see our needs. You see what needs to happen for us to, to go to another level as a church, for us to, to, to see what we have envisioned happen. And I'm praying and I'm asking the Lord this stuff. And he reminds me, he's the one who bu builds his house. He's the one that will send the workers into the harvest field. I'm the one to pray about it. I'm the one who, instead of complain about it, I'm called to pray about it. Instead of complain about how people are not putting their hands to the plow, right? I'm to pray, God, help people hear your voice and do what you have called them to do. The truth of the matter is, if we would first sit with Jesus, then we would have the strength to serve his people. See, the thing is, no one cares more about his people than he does. You can love people. You can be the peopleest, 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 people, 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 people person. <laughs> I feel like I'm a people person, right? I, I have a, a, at least one of my four kids that is a people person. They could be with people all week long, and they're like, I'm recharging by going out and being with more people. I'm like, oh, my goodness, if that ain't me made over. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how I have been until I got a little more closer to middle age. And I'm like, let me get away from people and recharge, right? But at the same time, friends, no one loves God's church more than God himself loves his church. And so we, t we are to pray and ask God, God, do what you need to do in the hearts of people to give them to the heart of Mary and the feet of Martha. Come on. We need the heart of Mary and the hands of Martha. We need to be able to sit at the feet of Jesus so that we can have the strength to be the hands and feet of Jesus. But we have to make sure we're in his presence. A wise minister once said, never minister out of your cup, always out of your saucer. God desires to, be fi to fill us with his spirit so that we can be overflowing with service to God and to others. And as we continue to plant churches and to grow and to send people to the mission field and to, to do the things that God has called us to do, as we continue to say, we want to see Ohio for Jesus. We want to see Toledo for Jesus. We want to see Waterville and the surrounding areas for Jesus. We're going to need people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. But friends, we never want you to be doing so much that you find yourself burning out because you're not being with God. So let your being with God support your doing for God. Amen. So if you want to serve victoriously, then let that be the case. If you want to serve victoriously, well, then also you need to empty yourself. To empty yourself means to humble yourself. Matthew 23, 11 and 12 says, the greatest among you must be your servant. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. See, some translations actually say the greatest among you will be your slave. And in this um, time and, and culture, this was super culture, cu counter-cultural, and it still is to this day. Actually, the word servant here, we see uh, the English New Testament usually represents the Greek word for du dulius, which is bond slave. Sometimes it also means deaconess is where we get the word deacon from or the word minister from. This is strictly accurate. These Greek words are synonyms. They, they mean the same thing. Both of them demote, denote a man who is not of his own disposal, but at his master's purchase property, bought to serve his master's needs, to be at his beck and call at any moment. Isn't that interesting? The slave's sole, sole business is to do what he is told. 
And Christian service, therefore, means first and foremost living out that kind of servant relationship or slave relationship to our master. I've had so many people say, well, I, you know, I want to be a minister. Well, all of us are called to be ministers because all of us are called to be servants, friends. Every single one of us, we're called to serve. That means that we are not our own person. Oh, I'm my own man. I'm my own person. I have my own thoughts. Okay, well, that's fine, friend, but we have to surrender that to the Lord if we're truly his servant, his will, not my will, right? To empty ourselves is to say less of me, more of you. You have your way. You have your way. Here's a principle. If we want to become truly great, we must give up our personal rights to serve others. Woo, come on, somebody. We have to give up our personal rights rights to serve others. We need to be repeatedly reminded that our central ambition should be to minister to people, not to be admired by people. I've seen some young ministers, man, like they just want to be admired so so much. That's like like I'm like that can't be your motivation because the Bible says a man is tested by the praise he receives. And the same praise that you might receive could easily, when you don't meet someone's expectation, be turned on the flip side, right? And that's not just with the, with the person speaking and preaching. That's, with, that's in your life. That's with your marriage. Like, that's with your children. That's at your job place. We have to be careful that we're not doing things for the, the, uh, uh, because we want to be admired by people. One, one preacher said, we're to be fishers of men, not fishers of men's compliments. And we have to be careful to constantly make sure that we are humbling ourselves before the Lord. Humility is key to emptying ourselves. When we empty ourselves before God, we need to ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Now, I almost made this point a little bit different. I called it emptying yourself. I almost added, but I was like, ooh, Joy, you are just worldly on the wordy, wordy side today. But I almost said it's really two E's because it truly is emptying yourself, right, humbling yourself, but so that you can be empowered by the Spirit. I've had people ask me, well, what, you know, What's the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You know, and, and for those who don't know, we do believe uh, we are a Pentecostal church. We are AG church, and we believe in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God wants to immerse you and baptize you in his spirit. But the purpose of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues, friends. That may be an initial evidence. That may be one of the gifts that he gives you along with prophesying and, and uh, gifts of wisdom and knowledge and service, okay? But that's not the end all be all to everything. Really, the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to empower you to do the work of the ministry. That's what the purpose of it is. It's to, it, to empower you for life and service. Come on, somebody. When we empty ourselves, we make room to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we need the Holy Spirit to empower us. I do believe that is key of why we see so much burnout in even the church, because we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to empower us for life and service, not just for service, but for life. You know, God has given you everything you need for life and godliness, for life and service. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to, to fellowship with us, to be with us, to remind us, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to comfort us. Come on, somebody. This is what we need. And so if we want to serve victoriously, yes, we need to empty ourselves so that we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We also need to be, remind ourselves that our reward is, is in heaven. Our reward is in heaven. So many people are so focused on here and now that we forget that we are passing through. Even if you live a very long life like my grandparents in their mid-90s who just passed away, that is still nothing. That's a drop compared to eternity. And Jesus says that if you gain the whole world here, yet forfeit your soul, you've gained nothing, right? He says here in Matthew 6, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then 
your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then he goes on. He says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to the Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Friends, we need to receive our reward in heaven and not just here on earth. And in order to do that, we have to check our motives. Why are we serving? Why are we giving? Why are we doing these things? Is it because we want accolades? Is it because we want to be seen by man? Or is it because we want to honor our Father in heaven? And you know what? There's times. There's times that if we're honest, there's times that we do things because, because of people and not because of God. And it's, so, it's okay to be honest. Say, you know what, God, I, I have. I've done this because I wanted to please somebody. I've done this with the wrong motive. Lord, forgive me and help me remember to do it because I want to please you. And Matthew 6, 1 says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly. to Be admired by others for you will lose the reward from your father in heaven it's so hard these days um to and the days that we live and the culture that we live in it's it's almost promoted we almost promote ourselves daily um through our social medias and it's hard i mean i get it i'm on social media a lot th through for the church and and because i love talking to people and, and i like it just being honest most of the time <laughs> but I have to check myself. Do I need to put out every time I do something good on social media? Do I need to put out every time I, I eat with somebody, go out with somebody, have a double date with somebody every time? I mean, it's okay to put out sometimes. It's okay to connect with each other, guys. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a tool. But we have to check our motives. Why are we using it? If our motive is we want so-and-so to see what we're doing, well, then we need to be careful. If our motive is we want to show everybody this great vacation we took or this great time we did or this great service we were at or this great preaching that we saw or this great, look at this, oh, look at me give away my last dollar to somebody. I mean, we've, we, we see, you can go on YouTube and, and see that kind of stuff, guys. we got to be careful that we're not doing our good deeds so that people can see them. We're doing them because we want to honor our Father in heaven. And, our re and that is our reward. We need to serve God for his eyes only, not man's applause. Ooh, I came back strong on y'all. I love you, though, but for real. For real. It's about his eyes, not man's applause. And we need to remember that when we serve others, we literally serve Jesus. But what do you mean? Well, that's what the word of God says. That's what Jesus tells us in Matthew 24. He says, the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. I know people who have given the last coat that they've owned away and did it in secret. I know people who've given anonymous checks um, to awesome um, missions and to the uh, church building things and, and to, to sacrifice to give. And they did it not because they wanted a plaque on the wall, but because they wanted God's kingdom to multiply and for God to be glorified. Come on, somebody. I know people who've done small things like drop off diapers at a new mother's door and then make sure they left before they were seen just because they did it out of the kindness of the heart, not because they wanted a thank you card. And, there's, and it's okay to do those kind of things and to make yourself known. I'm not saying that you can never make yourself known. I'm saying we got to check our motives, okay? Check our motives. That's why. Friends, we serve out of the love for Christ. Because guess what? Ultimately, our reward is not just heaven. Our reward and our portion is Jesus. And I just, I sometimes just, I want people to get this now. You don't have to wait until you stand before him and to, to receive that personal relationship that you can have now. I'm telling you, friends, he's a friend that will never leave you. He's a lover like no other friends. He is the one who knows your every thought, your every motive, your numbers of hair on your head. He's knitted your bones together in your mother's womb. He knows you, and he knows what you're going to do before you do it, and he still loves you. Come on. There's nobody 
like our God. And you can have that personal relationship with him now. He is our reward. Amen. So to serve victoriously, we need to remember our reward is with God. Number four, to serve victoriously, we have to value others. Philippians 2, 3, and 4, love these verses here. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition and vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Woo-hoo! We got any siblings in here? <laughs> okay, we got any married people in here? You got any, any uh, person in here who has co-workers? Come on, we got to value others and put sometimes their interests above our own. It's not easy. Valuing others is a way of serving others. When we truly value other people made in God's image, created by God, made in his image, this is pleasing to God. You know, friends, something that I would like to see change in our culture as a, as a people, as a church, is so often when we are serving, we say things like, I've heard young people say it like, oh, I had to be in ECD, which is what we call our nursery and preschool, okay? I had to be in ECD, and so I missed this. Or I, I got to serve in kids' church, so I won't be able to do that. Or, you know, and it's like if we could just even change the verbiage a little bit, I have to? I got to? No, friends, you get to. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be able to serve. You know, uh, ch our church um, and the church in general is known as being uh, pro pro life and being for family and for children, and yet serving in the nursery is one of the hardest things to get people to do. <laughs> Come on, friends. And, and that's not just our church. That, that is every church, okay? I, I get the privilege of being able to be associate with a lot of different ministers in my position. And, and, and that, is a, that is a thing that's across the board in most every church. And we got to change that culture. It's not I get to. It's not I have to. It's an honor to be able to serve and with the babies. It's an, honor, it's an honor to be able to serve on the computer. It's, a, it's an honor to be able to open doors for people. Do you know in the Old Testament, the only people who were allowed to serve in the temple were Levites. They were the, from the tribe of Levites. And the, only, and the only ones who were able to do certain things was from, uh, from Aaron's line. And now, because of Jesus, every male and female, boy and girl, can serve God. That's a privilege. That's a, I get to, not I have to. We have to change our mindset on that. It's a blessing. And to add value to others, one must first value others. If we really value life, if we really value family, if we really value the church, then it's gonna be, we're going to be able to show it by what we're adding to it. We're not just sitting back like Martha and complaining because we're doing all the work. We're praying for God to raise up leaders. We're praying for God to raise up servant leaders. We're praying for God to, to do, change people's hearts. And we're doing our part. And we're making sure we're not burning out because we're being in the presence of God. And we're making sure we fill our own cup. We're making sure we're in our word, that we're being alone with God. And that we're doing it from a right motive because we love God and we love his people. And we want to see his church glorify. We want to see God glorify his church multiply. Come on, somebody. True service is putting other people's needs before our own. When we truly do this, we, we develop a serving lifestyle. And God will pour out his blessings on us. When we take care of one another, God always takes care of us. Amen? So when we, when we serve, we value others. When we serve victoriously, we follow the example of Jesus. Not only are we empowered by the Holy Spirit, but we follow the example of Jesus. Jesus is not just our motivation. He's our inspiration. He's our example, friends. Matthew 20, 28 says, just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. He didn't come to be served, but to serve others. And friends, we got to shift our mindset. We're not coming to church because we want someone to serve us, but we're coming because we want to serve God. We want to serve others because all week long we've been, we've been in our word. All week long we've been in the presence of God. Every day we make sure we value God by spending time with him and him equipping us and strengthening us so we can give back to others. And so we follow the example of Jesus who 
when he served, there was times he told the disciples like that, that, okay, wait here for a while. And he went by himself. Why do you think he went by himself on that boat to the other side of the sea? He needed a break. <laughs> he needed to get along with God. Why did he wake up early in the morning and said that he often would go or wake up early in the morning before everybody else would wake up to get alone with his father? If Jesus, 100% God and 100% man, had to do that, friends, we got to do it too. Come on. We got to do it too. We got to follow his example. Philippians 2, 3, and 7. I already read some of them. I'll read, finish it up here. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And then it says this. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Isn't that good? Our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And then listen to the example. It says here, it says, who being in very nature God, right, 100% God, 100% man, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being found in human likeness. The scripture goes on and says, and humbled himself to death, even death on a cross. He left the glory of heaven, the throne in heaven, to, to clothe himself in humanity. Come on. He made him, not only did he clothe himself in humanity, but he was born in Nazareth, which was basically the ghetto of, of <laughs> Israel at the time. Okay? Born in a manger, right? He, he wasn't born in a palace. He took on the nature of a servant. He washed the feet of his disciples, even the ones he knew would deny him, would leave him in his hour of need, who, who schemed against him. He still washed their feet. He took on the nature of a servant. And then Paul tells us in Philippians that our attitude should be like Christ Jesus. Woo. So when our husband asks us for breakfast and we say, you got two feet and two hands, get up and get it yourself. <laughs> uh, or our wives, Bobby laughed a little loud, asked us for breakfast, and we say the same thing, right? Come on. Come on. We got to be a servant, right? We got to be a servant, and we got to do it. We got, we, you know, we, but only from a right attitude. Don't do it if you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, you can get up and go get your own stuff. <laughs> What's well, funny is we'll do for other people what we won't even do for our own family, Right? If I'm sitting up here dying of, of, of thirst, somebody most likely, and that's funny, I didn't, that's not about Sarah because she's going to serve her family too. She cooks all the time. But, <laughs> right? Someone will go get me a water and help me out. But if we see at, at home and, and our husband or our, our spouse, our wife or our children, if they want something, we very likely will be more like, go get your own stuff. You know where the fridge is. <laughs> Man. God, help us serve one another with the attitude of Christ Jesus because I love you, because I get to, not because I have to. Help me when it's my week to serve in the nursery to remember, yes, I am pro-family. I am pro-life. I am pro-children, and I get to serve in the nursery. I get to help in kids' church. It's a privilege. It's an honor. Let me be remembered when school starts in four weeks. No one's counting down. Four weeks. Let me remember when it's homework time, I get to help my children with it. Who I'm preaching to myself now, somebody. <laughs> it's on tape now. Come on. Come on. But seriously, he served the needs of others, then demonstrated the ultimate act of servanthood when he gave when Jesus gave his life as a payment for our sins so that we can be set free. The true standard of greatness is the Savior's pattern of self-sacrifice. Now we're to follow his example. You know, when the New Testament speaks of ministering, remember that word serve, that servant means minister, that word that we all deacon, it all is the same thing. When, when, we, when, the, when the Bible talks about ministering to saints, it, it means prime, it does not mean primary preaching. It means devoting time, trouble, substance to giving to physically and practically help the people of God. This is the essence of Christian service, friends. 
And it's the loyalty to the king, King Jesus, expressing itself through the care of his servants. Come on. He's the king. We're the servants. God also showed me in, in prayer this week when I was praying about the harvest and I was praying to send the workers out and I was praying. I said, God, you know, we, we here at Vision Church, our Waterville location and our South Toledo location, and our Vision Kitchen about to fully open again in September. We need more volunteers. We need more people to, to go to the harvest to help do what God has called us to do. We need more people to step up. And I'm praying about it and I'm saying, Lord, you know, you know the harvest is plentiful. And he showed me, he said, the harvest, the harvest, we are the harvest. As people of God, we are the harvest. Your neighbor is the harvest. Your husband is the harvest. Your children's the harvest. Your coworker, they're the harvest. All of us, we're the harvest that God is talking about. But guess what? We're also the laborers. We're also the workers. You, me, my children, <laughs> your children, your coworker, your neighbor, the, the person at the grocery store, they're also the workers. And we need God to show us our season, our part. Our, our service and what we should do. We need to follow his example in doing it. Would you just um, focus on the Lord just a little bit longer? When you came in, hopefully you received just this little handout sheet that, that says we need to serve others more. And I want you to think of three ways you can serve others. And I wrote down two, and then, then I was like, I know there's an, another way. And I wanted to, for myself, I wanted to think of beyond just different ways. I wanted to think, well, how can I serve greater in the church? How can I serve greater with my family? And then the Lord showed me the other way for me personally to serve in a greater way is to pray more for the harvest, to pray more for God to raise up leaders, servant leaders to go do his will. I'm going to ask you, would you search, allow the Lord to search your heart? And would you also search your own heart and ask him, what can I do to be a greater servant? How can I serve victoriously? And let the Lord speak to you and write those things down to be accountable. And then later today, share that with somebody because that helps us also be accountable. To recap today, we've talked about serving victoriously. In order to do that, our, we have to support our doing for God by being with him. We have to empty ourselves from our pride and, and become a servant, be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need to remember our reward is in heaven. We need to value others. That's why we serve them. And we need to follow the example of Jesus. We can't truly serve unless we're surrendered to the Lord. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Thank you, Jesus. Would you just move on the hearts, Lord God, of your people? If you're in this place today and you know um, that you need to surrender in a greater way to the Lord to do his will, maybe you've never really, really truly made him um, your personal Lord and Savior in this place. That's where it starts. It always starts with surrendering to God and, and reminding ourselves that he is our Savior and we are his servants. He is Lord. We are his servants. If that's you and you need to do that today, would you just raise your hand before the Lord? Just raise your hand before the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're also in this place today and you know that God has been speaking to you about stepping up and serving more, whether it's here at church or at your workplace or home, and you know that you need to take that challenge to be more of a servant, would you just raise your hand before the Lord as well? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. If you've been in this place and you found yourself, you've been serving and you find yourself with like a Martha attitude and you've also been complaining about serving and about others not doing it and you need God just to kind of check your heart, check your attitude and help you get back to being in his presence, would you raise your hand before the Lord? Thank you. Thank you. Jesus.
go ahead and just stand to your feet. I want to say a prayer over, over you guys. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Maybe you're one of the ones who uh, raised your hand. If you would be so bold and just come right down here, I would like to anoint you with oil and pray for you as well. And we're going to pray for everybody. But if you're one of the ones who raised your hand, be so bold and just step up here. God wants to bless you today. He wants to touch you today.